Hello everyone, it's Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything, and welcome back to another video. Yu-Gi-Oh! is obviously a massive IP. The card game is huge, the show is well known, even if it's just well known for its original show, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters, and thus, there have been numerous references of Yu-Gi-Oh! in other pieces of media, specifically other pieces of anime. And so in this video, we will be going over 10 times that Yu-Gi-Oh!, the game we all know and love, was referenced in other shows. Duel Master's most recent episode actually paid tribute to three very well-known prominent Yu-Gi-Oh! characters in their own special way, and that's really what was the inspiration for this video. So without further ado, let's get to it. I hope you guys learned something new, and most importantly, I hope you enjoy. Starting with Duel Masters, in fact, all of the first three are going to be from Duel Masters, which again is what inspired me to do this list. I will link the episode down below since their official YouTube channel uploads the episodes in case you want to check it out for yourself. There is a scene in the first half of the episode where the announcer goes over the rankings of certain characters, characters that I assume are one-off characters, although the episode is not subbed, so I genuinely do not have much of an idea as to the context of these characters. Anywho, the first one that is shown to us is this man, clearly a reference to the one and only Yami Yugi. If the face and hair design wasn't enough of a resemblance for you, this character's name is literally Yu King and is the number one ranked duelist on this screen. The monster he is using is Gaia Sentai Dis Magician, which basically combines his famous Gaia and Dark Magician cards. The next duelist we see is this horsey looking dude in a white cape, which is supposed to resemble the one and only Seto Kaiba. Besides the white cape, there isn't too much of a resemblance in physical appearance, but the cards that this character uses are very telling. The cards are Bulmedius White Dragon and Bulmedius Legend Flare. Bulmedius White Dragon, Blue Eyes White Dragon, come on. I think it's safe to assume that this character is absolutely a reference to Seto, especially considering his placement on this screen. He is shown to us between Yu King and the next character, which is way more definitively a reference to the first arc of Yu-Gi-Oh. The very next character we see is my personal favorite. That's right, reigning from the United States of America is a half-human, half-Pegasus man. Even the red suit looks like it was taken straight from Maximilian Pegasus's closet. The smug face and smile reminds me of Duelist Kingdom Pegasus so much. Furthermore, this Pegasus has a card covering his right eye, which funny enough is the opposite eye that the Pegasus we all know from Yu-Gi-Oh! has the Millennium Eye in. Regardless, the color of this Pegasus, the fact that it's a legit Pegasus dueling reigning from the US, and the fact that it has something covering its eye is absolutely a reference to Pegasus. His card is Mangano Castle, which could definitely be a reference to Toon World, since the Toon World art also depicts a massive castle. This is probably my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! reference any show has ever done, and this is the one in particular that really inspired me to do this video. Really cool move from Duel Masters. Moving on to an entirely different show, and that is Anime Guitaris. It's a show that I don't know too much about, but it's basically a high school anime. Probably the worst description you will ever hear for this show. Anyway, taking a look at episode 11, there's a quick scene where we see a mock Yu-Gi-Oh! duel going on. The attack point and life point counter look very similar to how Yu-Gi-Oh!'s counters look, especially early series Yu-Gi-Oh!. Moreover, the skinny red dragon reminds me a lot of Slifer the Sky Dragon. The two monsters we don't see remind me of Feral Imp and maybe like a green Karibo with wings. Even the card frames that we see look like empty Yu-Gi-Oh card templates that you would find somewhere online. My favorite part of this scene has to be the overly obnoxious monster name. Black, Red, Blue, Yellow, Golden Dragon. Absolutely incredible. That might be poking fun at some of the overkill monster names Yu-Gi-Oh has, but either way, it is a really cool reference to the game of Yu-Gi-Oh in general. Moving over to another card game anime, good old Cardfight Vanguard. What? Cardfight Vanguard has a Yu-Gi-Oh! reference. Actually, Vanguard has one of the coolest Yu-Gi-Oh! references on this list. It has characters from the Yu-Gi-Oh! Tag Force games that appear in the show. Say hello to these three girls. You might recognize them if you are very familiar with the Tag Force games. We have Bright, Yuma Miyata, and Natalie. Now keep those girls in mind, and let's take a look at the subbed version, which is important for the context of this video, of Cardfight Vanguard, episode 53. Take a look at this scene. Wait a second, can we slow that down? 
Those girls look familiar, don't they? What are these Yu-Gi-Oh! Tag Force girls doing in Vanguard? Honestly, the more you think about it, the more confusing it gets for me. Vanguard and Yu-Gi-Oh! are major rivals, aren't they? So how did Vanguard get permission to use those character designs in one of their episodes? What makes this scene even more mind-boggling is that in the English dub version, the girls aren't there. They are replaced by these frat boy looking characters. Did Vanguard get in trouble for using these designs and had to remove them in the English dub? Honestly, I have no idea. I didn't even know this was a thing until a few days ago, but it truly is nuts. I mean, there's no doubt that these are the girls we just went over from Tag Force. They look identical, and they even have the same freaking outfit as they do in the games. It's easily the most puzzling reference on this list, and it gets more confusing the more you think about it. Regardless, I love it. You know I love Easter eggs like this, and this is one of the coolest references ever. Next up, we have a show called A Certain Scientific Railgun. Man, some of these anime titles are really wild. I love it. Taking a look at episode 4, the main character of the show, Makoto Misaka, is reading a manga which should look very familiar to you. While not an exact copy of a Yu-Gi-Oh! manga, the cover seems to show cards that heavily resemble Yu-Gi-Oh! cards, and apparently, the card game in this universe is called Hydra Battle Monsters. What I find really interesting is the color of the cards. You have your normal monsters, your spell cards, and your Link monsters? But wait, this show came out way before Links were a thing. Do we have a conspiracy theory on our hands here? Did the writers of a certain scientific railgun know what summoning method and color-coded card was going to be next in Yu-Gi-Oh? Obviously, I'm completely kidding. That <laughs> There's no substance to that at all. But this tribute to the game we all know and love is great, nevertheless. Fairy Tale even has a Yu-Gi-Oh reference. I'm sure that's what a few people thought when they saw the thumbnail. Well, as a matter of fact, it does. In episode 138 and 139, we see something in the background of a few shots. Looking at the objects that are chained to these statues, they look very, very much like the Millennium Puzzle, right? Granted, if it was just gold pyramids, I'd say it's probably a stretch to say it is a Yu-Gi-Oh reference, but the almost identical Eye of Wajat being in the center of these objects is what really confirms it for me. I think it's too similar to just chalk it up as a coincidence, but what do you think? Lucky Star is the next anime up on this list. Lucky Star is a high school anime that follows the lives of four girls. The art style is definitely unique, and it really goes to show that you never know what sort of anime is going to have references and odes to any piece of media, let alone Yu-Gi-Oh. In episode 13, there is a scene where Konata acts like a Yu-Gi-Oh duelist by summoning something she is describing to her friends. It's actually pretty cool. She has the dual disc, even the Millennium Puzzle around her neck, the cards in her hand, and then she summons the thing she is talking about. If you showed me the art of this anime and told me what this story was about, I would have bet a lot of money that Yu-Gi-Oh! was not referenced. But hey, you can never judge a book by its cover. Hayat the Combat Butler holds another nod to the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise. The story follows Hayat, who ends up working for a rich family and basically has to keep that family safe. That's another probably terrible brief synopsis for me, but anyway, let's look at episode 29. Hayat is challenged by a quote-unquote dual butler, and what commences next looks like a scene that was ripped directly from a Yu-Gi-Oh! spinoff. The characters even have dual discs, the monsters have stats that are displayed very similarly to how they are in Yu-Gi-Oh! It's great. The episode takes it one step further by having Hayat reference the relationship of Yugi and Yami Yugi by jokingly splitting his conscious into two, with a more innocent-looking version of him cheering on a more serious-looking version of him. The show actually has another quick reference in episode 39. In this shot, we see a sign. I imagine it's like a stadium sponsorship or an advertisement sign that you would see in traditional stadiums and arenas. And to anyone who has seen Yu-Gi-Oh! spelled out in Japanese, this probably rings a bell. Funny enough, the direct translation is apparently Yusuo instead of Yu-Gi-Oh!, but I mean, it's so obvious that this is another reference to the famous card game. Whoever worked on this show must have been a big fan of Yu-Gi-Oh!, some really cool references. And finally, we have an anime called Wotakoi Love is Hard for Otaku. I apologize if I got that name wrong. This is easily the most relatable one on this list. How many times are we going through our old stuff and we find a pile of trading cards? Whether those are Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, baseball cards, doesn't matter. I feel like this is something that has happened to most of us. And I can't tell you how many times friends of mine have said something along the lines of, Oh yeah, so I was cleaning out my room and I found a bunch of my old Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Well, let's take a look at episode 3. A character named Narumi 
Akame is searching through Hirotaka's room and finds a stack of very familiar cards. Even though it's impossible, at least for me, to make out what the exact card is, it's obviously supposed to be a Yu-Gi-Oh card. My favorite part about this is Narumi states that they used to trade cards and duel without even knowing the rules. Again, this is the most relatable thing ever. When I was in elementary school, almost everyone in the school would be playing Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon, and honestly, we had no idea what we were doing. We would just slap down the cards and sometimes even make up our own rules as if we were fighting in the Duelist Kingdom arc. It was a blast, and if this show is as relatable of a show as this one scene and references, then maybe I should check it out. Regardless, it's one of my favorite references to Yu-Gi-Oh on this list. And that about wraps it up. Thank you all so much for watching. Ten times Yu-Gi-Oh! was referenced in other pieces of media and other animes. Still not sure what I'm going to title this. I really hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And if I missed any, which I know for a fact I did because there have been numerous references. I just kind of picked a round, easy number in ten. Please let me know down below. Maybe I will work on a part two for this video. Also, a big thank you to JBix for helping me out and going through a few of these. And a big thank you to my team for also finding a lot of these references. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. And a special thank you to my platinum tier patrons, Alexa Baker, Glenn McGookin, Jorge Carrillo, James Rose, Samuel Stark, Thomas Adderley, Horace May, Goosey Q, Vincent Vanderveen, Red Eye, Frost Reaper, Smith620, and Jordan Osceola. And do my diamond tier patrons, Jesse Wood and Garrett Palmer. And do my Egyptian god tier patrons, Sin Cloud, Chris Swan, Matthew Kennedy times two, and Joss Rivers. Massive, massive thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. Massive thank you to everyone who is a YouTube channel member. And a massive thank you to everyone who just watches and comments on these videos. Because without you guys, I would not be able to do this. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. I will talk to you down below. And I hope you have an amazing day.